Kicks off. This is the Friday Sports Riot. I'm Ryan Hoppy. And I'm Ryan Stuppridge. If you want to call the show, you want to call SportstownChicago.com live. It's 630-403-5200. That's 630-403-5200. And now, Ryan, who do we have on the phone line? From 670 The Score, we have Mark Grody on the Illinois Center for Broadcasting Hotline. Hey, Mark. What's going on, Ryan? How are we doing today? Good. We are doing good. And now, real quick, what is your take on this tropical 50-degree weather outside? Well, my take is not to just don't let it fool you, because I think we've had some nice days scattered yeah. in throughout this awful winter. So I'm just waiting for the bottom to fall out. It's great and all that, but you know, until, until the weather actually really kicks in and it's warm every day, I don't trust a darn thing that happens outside right now. And now, how nice of a summer do you think we will have? Will it be nice, or will it just be another average summer? I, I, look, I was not prepared to talk weather with you guys. Oh, yeah. You guys told me that, I totally would have done the research. But um, <laughs> you know what? I, I, I don't know if it's ever actually going to kick in. I, gotta, I think I was talking to somebody about this today that I feel like, like the actual summer won't kick in until July, and we're still going to have like horrendous weather. Oh, until, man. Until May, I mean, I've always said like that brings actually does bring up a sports thing. I've always, I, I would I would vote for, and it would probably never happen, but I would love to see the baseball season push back until until May and <laughs> the ridiculously early cold frost season that happens in the Midwest, which will happen again this year, and there'll be games. Which will be just, I mean, I don't care. Like these guys, these guys that complain that are from warm weather cities and countries, they got a point, man. Baseball is not meant to be played in frost. It's true. Now let's uh, talk about the Bulls after their big win last night against the Rockets. Uh, how about the play of uh, Joakim Noah and Mike Dunleavy in that game? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, Noah's been a fascinating player this year because he's always had, like, people that are surprised about the energy and spirit that he has, they're kind of missing it because he's always had that. What people should be excited about is his actual play on the court, the fact that the guy could have came within an assist of his, fourth triple-double this year, and the fact that he has become, I wouldn't call him a polished player, that's probably a bad word to use with Joakim Noah, but he's become a critical player defensively and offensively, sort of playing that point center spot. Dunleavy was good, because he's had a spasm of good games this year. I mean, he's not he's not used to playing there. I don't think he expected to play, I should say, the minutes that he's playing this year, but he had a heck of a game uh, last night after taking that elbow to the head. You know, He makes the triumphant return, and the blood squirting all over the place, so it was uh, quite the scene for for Dunleavy. It's going to get interesting too because the Bulls are at uh, at Sacramento tomorrow, and it was I don't know if you guys remember this, but recently Demarcus Cousins yeah was uh, calling Mr. Dunleavy. Oh, that's clown, right, yeah. Uh, which is just hilarious because it's just <laughs> like of all people, you know, I mean, Dunleavy seems like this sort of passive sort of you know you know in the background sort of NBA guy, but. He's under he's under Marcus Cousins' skin for something, so I'll be watching that closely too. And now with the Rockets, how surprised were you by Dwight Howard's lack of a good game last night against Joe Kim Noah? Well, you know, I call that being NBA'd because that yeah. that that happens sometimes with these guys. Just for whatever reason, they will have an off night, or they will just decide they're not into it. And that that was the case yeah. with, with the entire team. You know, I mean, I, I would even. I mean, he he got a double double, and I, obviously it wasn't a dominating double double. That would look more like at Harden, who had you know seven points. Um, Howard had seven turnovers. That's probably the the number that you circle in his statistics from last night. You know, overall, I still think that it's a great debate. You know, Dwight Howard versus Joe Kim Noah, who's the better center? I'd still probably take Dwight Howard on my team in terms of just pure domination, ultimately. But he had an off night last night for sure. But that's a good team, Houston. What do you think of Dwight overall? I think he's a bit overrated just because there aren't that many elite centers in the end, in the NBA right now. What is your take on Dwight overall? Um, overall, yeah, I don't know if I would consider him um, underrated because, yeah, you're right, there's not a lot in general yeah. in the NBA. There's not a whole lot of dominant big men forces left. I feel like he probably hasn't done as much with the physical gifts that he has been given. Uh, I'll give you that. But I will say in you know, relative terms to other people at his position and even forward spots and just power positions, ain't a whole lot these days in the NBA. So in terms of that, you know, he's, he's pretty important. 
and probably, in my opinion, um, rated properly at that spot. And it seems that he's found a, a good place in Houston after all the gr- really good years in, in Orlando. But then they dud last year and again, you know, with the Lakers. And you thought, has this guy lost a step? But I don't think he has. And now this is my take, but wouldn't you agree he wouldn't be as good if he played against Shaq, Hakeem Olajuwon, David Robinson, and Tim Duncan every night in their prime? <laughs> you know, it would be it would be fantastic yeah. to see something like that. Yeah, I think I think in their prime. I mean, a couple of those guys that you mentioned, you know, Tim Duncan in his prime, a really good offensive player. You know, Olajuwon. He became a really good offensive player in terms of having good post moves and stuff like that. That's something that Dwight Howard has completely uh, perfected. He's more Shaquille O'Neal when it comes to offensive game. To yeah. where he can just sort of plow his way and muscle his way, and it doesn't look as pretty, but he's stronger than, than those guys that you mentioned. So it would be interesting to see Dunk. I mean, physically, he can dominate those guys. Skill-wise, no. Now, uh, looking at the NCAA tournament, um, Going into it, you know, Florida is going to be a number one seed, and Wichita State will probably get a number one seed. Uh, is, is there any, like, specific team, maybe a team under the radar that you think can make a deep tourney run? You know, there's a, there's one team that, that has been shouting at me all year long, and they seem like a team that we only pay attention to in the tournament, and that's San Diego State. Yeah. yeah. Um, AP-wise, I believe they're eighth right now, but yes. they've just sort of – quietly work their way up and you know nobody around here is up late enough to see their games but they're a team that has has crawled up um the board for me i guess you can't really say wichita state because like you guys said it'd probably be uh, there'll be a one team but it's still a great story to have a team like that um dominating this year and you know going beating a lot of people say well they didn't play anybody the missouri valley conference and all that stuff so to be i'm going to keep a close eye on what wichita state does but san diego state i guess to answer your question yeah would be my sleeper yeah and to me i think florida could definitely make a deep run and also i think another team that a lot of people maybe don't think will go to you know the final four is wisconsin i think that the 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 uh the badgers have a really good chance of making it all the way to the final four yeah, I guess if there was a team in the Big Ten to do it, I would say Wisconsin or Michigan State. I mean, and I realize that Michigan is the best of the bunch in terms of rankings and what they did this season. Um, but and and, and when ultimately though, I, I would say I would I kind of don't trust any Big Ten teams to make it into the Final Four. But I just never count out Tom Izzo. He's that's such a he's such a tournament coach. He's always such a tournament team. So if I had my Big Ten team, I would say Michigan State. Wouldn't be shocked if it was. Um, Wisconsin, but there's something untrustworthy about the Big Ten this year. Are there any teams to look out for that could be upset? Any top seeds that you just see going down real early? Um, oh, teams that might be upset? Yeah, um, right. You know, one team that I that I would look at in that capacity might be in Arizona. Um, you know, they spent a lot of time at, at number one. Um, and I just wonder how good they're going to be come tournament time. They'll be an interesting team to watch. And then, and then, like I think those some of those, uh, the Michigan, um, yeah, you know, they're eighth in the country right now. I think that they're going to, obviously they're going to have a high seed in the tournament. I think that they may may go down quickly just because I think relatively speaking the Big Ten was down this year. So so yeah, Arizona, Michigan. I'm trying to think if there's any other teams that that pop to mind. Not, not really. Not really. I think the heavy hitters. I think it's going to be another heavy hitter year this year in terms of Final Four with, you know, the Floridas and the and the Kansases and the Dukes and, and things. And there might be one sort of outside school like a Wichita State or Creighton or something like that that slips into the Final Four, depending on how the brackets go down. And now, how far do you think Duke will make it with Jabari Parker on the team? Will he have a good March Madness? Now that's, that's a good question because he's been, I think, overall, like, he's yeah. kind of been disappointing, hasn't right? he? Like, in terms of, yeah. like, what he was supposed to do this year relative to the, uh, he was supposed to be this dominant force, you know, um, in, in college basketball. So I feel like he's a little bit of a wild card. But I actually think Duke is going to do very well in the tournament. They may be, again, I, I got to see how the brackets come down on Sunday and all that stuff, but I think Duke might be one of my early favorites to make it to the Final Four. I don't know how great Jamari Parker is going to be necessarily, uh, but we'll see. It'll be interesting to see, too, what he does beyond this year. Now, uh, real quick, the Bears have made you know a 
a whole bunch of off-season moves. Uh, have you liked a lot of the off-season moves that they have made so far, like signing uh, Lamar Houston? Yeah, you know what? None of these moves have made me like pump my fist or get really excited <laughs> yeah. or anything. Because I mean, there there hasn't been a splash. I mean, let's let's face it. But I guess you have to go with the theory of anything would be better than what they put together last year. And right. these guys look like they look like solid football players. Um, we're not talking about huge sack numbers for many of these guys, especially Lamar Houston. I think he just had he had six sacks last season, but these guys are competent football players who could be starters along a defensive line who are good at stopping the run because, of course, that's a dirty little secret. Let's not forget how horrendous the Bears were at stopping the run last year. Um, So that's something that had to be focused on. You know, that's the thing, too. I was looking at some numbers. Teams um, were, you know, part of the reason that the Bears were not getting sacks is because teams were running heavy against the Bears. Like 50% of the time, teams are... Teams are running against the Bears, so they never get to a point where they're in a passing situation because they were just running free to figure out who could stop the run before you could figure out who was going to sack the quarterback. Right. Not even getting that opportunity at this point. Now, uh, before we let you go, where can people find your work online and on the radio? Well, I am uh, on Twitter um, at Mark Grody Sports. My last name is spelled G R O T E. It is a uh, very easy. Spell. Um, I am on the score on 670 every morning between 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. with Molly and Hanley, working with the Molly and Hanley show. Um, and then Saturdays, I am on with Steve Rosenblum. We do the Rosenblum and Grody show from usually from 10 until 1. As a matter of fact, we'll be on tomorrow morning from uh, 10 a.m. until uh, 1 p.m. Just hanging out, taking calls, having guests. I just kind of like what you guys do. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show, Mark. Have a good weekend, my man. All right, you guys, enjoy the weather while yeah. it lasts for 24 yeah. hours. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thanks. All right, guys. See you, Ryan. Have a good weekend. You too, man. And that was Mark Grody of 670 to score.